Once again, a very warm welcome to all my dear students, listeners and viewers to this radio tele-tutoring program. I'm Ms. Viveko Nyovile from Mount Sinai High Secondary School for your English, that is for class 10. Today, I've picked up the topic Invictus. I repeat Invictus, which is in page number 79 till page number 85. Page number 79 till page number 85 the main characters here will be Nelson Mandela and Francois Pinar. We will discuss about discrimination, which is based on racism. Okay, the word Invictus is a Latin word, and it is also the name of a poem written by William Ernest Henley, an English poet. We will be discussing about the poem a little bit later, but before that, Every lesson has an implication. It is important to understand the story and to learn the story, but more important than that is the life implications that we can learn from the lessons. Whatever lessons may it be, there is always a lesson that we can imply it in our daily lives. I'm sure we all have heard of discrimination. Discrimination can be defined as an unfair treatment to a group of people based on social status, based on sex, or based on race. And here, in this story, we will learn about how racism was practiced in South Africa in the olden days. And so, discrimination based on racism means based on the color or the race that you belong to. We all hear about racism daily. It might, we also hear of our people being discriminated in some other parts of the world. The same thing even in the places that we live. You might have heard of that a lot. And this all arises because we feel that our race is superior to the other kinds of races. We also have heard of world wars that, that emerged because of racism. There are some particular race of people who thinks that their race is superior to others and they are the ones born to rule. And this is something that has to be removed from our mindset. Here. Since we have learned about racism and discrimination, while going through the lesson, the story, we should also learn the negative implications that we can get in our lives if we are not careful with this kind of attitude in our daily living. And so, Nelson, we are going to discuss about Nelson Mandela, who was inspired by the poem Invictus. We have got the title of our story as Invictus because our the main character here, Nelson Mandela, was inspired by the poem called Invictus, written by William Ernest Handley. Let me discuss the poem a little bit here. The poem talks about how the world, how the world brings sufferings to our lives, or maybe we are inflicted with pains and sufferings from every corner. But what we have to know is that we cannot be suppressed or conquered by these things, as the word Invictus liter lit literally means unconquerable. And the poet William Ernest Henley had gone through a lot of physical pains. He had got Bones DB, and even now Bones DB is considered to be a very serious disease, but in those days there were no medications for TB. And that is the reason why he had to go through a lot of pains. Finally, with all the medications, he was not cured, so he had to amputate his knees. To amputate means to cut off. Nelson Mandela got this inspiration because the poem is a very powerful poem and it writes about that we will still be the masters of ourselves no matter what struggles and sufferings that we go through. That is the reason why the, the title of our story here has got Invictus as its title. Okay, getting back into the story, we will see that Nelson Mandela was a person who had gone through a lot of trials and sufferings in his lifetime. He had been imprisoned, not for any crimes that he had done, but because he stood for the rights of his people. He was a black African, and in those days, apartheid was, apartheid was a law that was passed against the black. That means they were not given the rights in their own hometown. We are not discussing about any other countries. South Africa, as we all know, is a country that is inhabited by the black Africans. Of course, there are some white people, but the majority of the population consists of the black Africans. But in their own hometown, they were always being persecuted by the people, by the whites living there. There are some jobs reserved only for the whites. You might have heard of this in your SS classes, and I'm going to repeat here. 
they, there were some high official posts that were reserved only for the whites and they cannot get into it. Forget about getting jobs, they were not even given the democratic rights. We all have heard of adult franchise. That is the right given to every adult above the age of 18 years to have the right to vote. But they were not given this. Only a few group of people will represent the black people. And so they had no right to go for elections. Here, elect, when election comes, we all know that we, if you have attained 18 years of age, you will always be given the right to vote. But in their context, it was not like that. There were a few group of people who were selected to represent the black people. And that is the only right that they were given. There are some places, public places that were restricted to the blacks, only the whites can enter. So you can imagine how painful, how hurting it would be. Living in your own hometown, you are still not given the permission you ha to have access to some popular places or to some popular works that you still want to do. The works given to you will only be the manual works or the works that other people did not want to do. But as they had no option, they have to go with this. And so Nelson Mandela could not see the struggles and the sufferings that his people were going through. He stood for the rights of his people and he was put to prison so many times. And now in the final time that he went to prison, he spent his years in prison for more than decades. You know, a decade consists of 10 years. So imagine decades is a plural word. Here in the book, it's just written more than decades, but it says that he was in the prison for around 28 years. You can imagine that. Being imprisoned in the Robben Island prison for 28 years, if that was to be in our context. Spending our months and years in the prison, even for a month, we all will lose hope. Even if we were bailed out on some conditions, maybe we will not have the courage to go out and work again. But Right after he was released from the Robben Island prison in the year 1990, he began to work to give full democratic rights to his people. He did not start working so that they can oppress the white people like they have been suppressed under them. But what he really wanted was, he just wanted equality for his people. He is not demanding for any special right. He just feel that his people also should come to a level where they would be equal with the rest of the world. And that is the reason why he kept working. He did not lose hope. Right after he was released from the prison, for after spending more than decades in a prison, he still did not lose hope for the same reason that he was sent to jail. Maybe if he did not do that, he would have lived a comfortable life belonging to a higher strata. But he did not just think for his comfort, he looked at his people in general and then he began to work for his people with this thought of equality in his mind. And he did not lose hope, he kept working and finally he succeeded. When he was released, it was 1990 and in the year 1994, he, could able to, he was able to give the right to his people. He began fighting for it and then he continued. In the year 1994, he was elected as the first black president of South Africa, the first black president of South Africa, I repeat, because that was their homeland, but they were never given the right to govern their own people. There were some other races of people governing them every time with rules and laws that were against them. But he, he succeeded finally and he came to power. When he came to power, what he saw was that social, uh, racial tensions, that means there were tensions between the two races, the whites and the black. He found that racial tensions were rampant, that means found in abundance, not just in some areas, but everywhere, in every strata of the society. Strata means layer. You have learned this in your science class. So in every layer of the society, he found that there were racial tensions found in abundance everywhere. So he found that this should not be something that they, they practice on even in the future. That is the reason why he tried to balance the black aspirations with the white fears. Black aspirations with the white fears. This is a question that we normally get in our questions too. Balancing the black aspirations. That means the blacks have got a lot of hopes now as one of their members, as one of their people have come up to the top of the country. They might be thinking for a normal person who thinks only for their races. Maybe as they had been living under the oppression of the whites for so long, they might also be planning for revenge. 
That is something. And so finding this, he found that he should balance the black aspirations with the white fears. And the whites will obviously be in fear. They were always, they were now in fear because they knew that they had mistreated the blacks before Nelson Mandela came to power. And so they were expecting the same treatment that they have been receiving, that they had been meeting out to the black. But Nelson Mandela wanted to make a balance between these two. He wanted to make sure that the blacks and the whites will live equally in their country. That is the res one of the most important thing that he had been working. And when he came to power, he found that he had to tackle crime and unemployment. See, when there is unemployment, crimes will always come out. And so there might be a lot of crimes, criminal activities going on. And if you don't have a job, maybe if you wanted to have something so badly, but you don't have the source, who knows? You might even adopt some wrong means to get that object or to get something that you want. See, people, as a normal human being, there, there is very high chances that you will get into wrong activities when you don't get the things that you wanted. This is something. He wanted to balance the black aspirations with the white fears and also to tackle crime and unemployment. He wanted to create jobs. He wanted to create job opportunities for the youths. And these are the things that he had been working hard on. One day, he, Nelson Mandela happened to attend a game of a, a game of rugby match with Springboks and Springboks is the country's official rugby team. That is the team that represents the country. But he found out that the home, the home crowd were not cheering the home team. See, no matter how, maybe you don't like a particular football team in our state or in our region, but if the team represents our state or our country, I'm, I'm very sure that you all will start supporting it, whether you like the players or not, because it belongs to you, it belongs to us. But this is a different thing. In South Africa, their home team is playing against some other nations, but they were not supporting them. We will come to this again later. He found that there were racial tensions in every strata of the society, and here, forget about the other groups, even in his security team. This, the job of the security team is just to protect the president for the safety of the president. But he found that they were always at loggerheads. The new blacks and the old whites. That means before Nelson Mandela came to power, he, there will be only some old whites. That means there will be some white people for the security of the president. But now as he came in, he also instituted some, he also registered some new black security officials for his team. He did not just select the black people because he wanted to show others that he works for equality. And in this, he found that the security members were always at loggerheads. That means they were always in dispute, disagreement. Though their primary job is to protect the president, they don't want to agree with one another because all these long years they had been living in disagreement to one another. And even when they went to play the rugby, they consider rugby to be the privileged sport of the white, though it represents the South African country. Why? Because there were only white players except one black player. See, this is the team that represents their country, but the majority of the population, that is the blacks are the majority there, but they were not given the opportunity to play in this team except one. Maybe that player was an exceptionally good player. Maybe that is the reason why he was taken there. But the the blacks did not like this team. It's because this team represents the oppressive white minority. Oppressive means who are always against them, oppressing them, torturing them. They represent it. And that is the reason why they never supported their home team. And after Nelson Mandela witnessed this, he found it hurting. He found that he had to do something for this. And also he realized that a transformation in the sport could go a long way in healing apartheid and its residual scars. He thought that and he felt that if there could be some changes made in this team, they, it would be a unifying factor for the country. Because when the home crowd starts liking this team, starts supporting this team, they will slowly and gradually begin to like the other whites to, that were living in their country. That is one thing that came to his mind. Because they never considered this team to be their official, of course it's their official team, but they never accepted them as their official team. Though they were playing against other countries, they would be supporting some other countries rather than their own 
country, and this is what hurt him. And so he began to work for this. He knew that it would heal the apartheid scars, the residual scars. Residual means the remains. You, you read the word residue in science. And so residual scars, the scars may not be visible. The scars are the marks, as we all know. If you get, if you get wounded, maybe you feel the pain for a moment, but even after the wound gets healed, you will still see the scars on you, on, on wherever the wound is, even after the wound is healed. This is something. And so even though the whites are not oppressing them anymore now, they would still feel the pain. You would still remember someone who hurt you some years back. Even though you say you have forgotten that, that pain, sometimes when you see that mark or when you see that person, the pain still comes back to you. The same thing was experienced in South Africa. And that is the reason why Nelson Mandela really wanted to do something to bring the two groups together. So what he decided was, he decided to go and meet the captain that is Francois Pinar. You might pronounce it in some other ways, but I want you to pronounce it that way. That is Francois Pinar. He decided to speak to him because being the captain, he could help him in some ways. So what Nelson Mandela did was he formed a new sports committee. I want you to know the difference between a committee and the team. Committee can be a group of people who does not even play, but they will sit together to work for the betterment of the team. So he formed a new sports committee comprising of majority of blacks, and they discussed the things together. And he also pointed out his views that if Springboks could capture the imagination, he had an imagination that if Springboks could capture the support of this home crowd, it would be able to unify the country in the long run, not only for the period of time that they will go. And keeping in mind that South Africa would host the 1995 Rugby World Cup. 1995. See, Nelson Mandela came to power in the year 1994. The next year, there will be the World Cup. And that is going to be held in South Africa. So Nelson Mandela had something. He had a vision in his mind that if they could do something in the upcoming World Cup, it would help them in the long run, that the country would be united even in the future. That is something that he kept in his mind. And he held a meeting. After holding the meeting with the sports committee, they also brought some new black players together with white players. They, they wanted to show the world and also even amongst themselves that they are united. And not only showing, but he wants to have a real unity among the two races of people. That is the reason why he had been working for all this. So after hold, holding the meeting with the committee members, he went to meet Frank, uh, Francois Pinar. And then after meeting him, he did not say so in many words. But the captain, Pinar understood the underlying message that Nelson Mandela wanted to convey. Nelson Mandela also told him about the poem called Invictus. And that is the reason why we have taken this as the title. He told the captain, that is Pinar, about how he was inspired by this poem when all he wanted to do was lie down. I'm sure he had gone through a lot of disappointments. Anytime he works, he'll be put to jail and being in the prison for more than decades would not be a joke. If we really happen to experience that, I'm sure we will not be able to come out and live a normal life again. Many of us will go through depression and we would not even want to continue the normal works. Our life would be wasted. But he did not go through all this. And the reason why he kept his head up was because he was inspired by this poet. William Ernest Henley, who had to go through a lot of physical sufferings that I've mentioned in the earlier part of our classes. He had gone through a lot of sufferings, but he still thinks that he is the master of his soul, the conqueror of his soul. And no one can be his master, not even the physical pains. Whatever you have in your mind, the determination that you have in your mind, if you are strong with that determination, you will be able to go in a long way. And after finding that, the pains that he had to go through, all the physical sufferings, and he still composed a poem. He still wrote a poem like this. So it would be wrong on his part to feel weak. Because even though he had been put to prison, he had not gone through any physical, any physical pains like the sicknesses that this poet had gone through. Of course, he had gone through some sufferings and trials. But that does not mean that his condition is worse than the poet. And that is the reason why it kept him inspired all through his prison life. And he began to read books. He read a lot of books while he was still in prison.
And so these are some things that he told him and even the captain understood what Nelson Mandela wanted to convey to him. And so he began to work with his instruction. After he met Nelson Mandela, they began to make arrangements. When Nelson Mandela first went to the rugby match, he found that people were not united, they were jeering at one another. Instead of cheering, they were jeering. To cheer means to support somebody, and to jeer means to make fun, and also to insult, making, shouting words of insults to them. You might even have experienced this. There are some people who, who are rude, and when some teams, that, some teams enter the ground, under the playground, if that is a team that they do not like, they even jeer at them, shouting words of discouragement. These are some things that his own countrymen were doing to their own home team. Nelson Mandela could not bear this, so he began working out on all these plans. See, we can see the strength that Nelson Mandela had in him. Even after all the sufferings that he had faced by the whites, by the law that is against the black, he did not lose hope. He still wanted to bring the two groups of people together because he knew that unless this is done, even if he was in power right now, the next term, the next tenure, if somebody comes to power, it would affect the countrymen again. That is the reason why he had a vision. And he wants to live, he wants to let the world live in an equal world, in an equal place. And that is the reason why he had been working on all these things. And so, in the year 1995, when the Rugby World Cup started, he, he experienced something different. He saw that the, when the team, that is the Springboks team, comprising of both the whites and the blacks, because earlier there were only whites, we, and that is the reason why Springboks represents, it symbolized that it symbolizes the oppressive white minority. But now, after seeing their own countrymen, the attitudes of the spectators, the home crowd began to change towards them. Nelson Mandela saw that the, they were encouraging them, they were supporting them, cheering them. And when this World Cup really started, he saw a complete difference. He, Nelson Mandela could have changed the name of the team, that is from Springbok to some other team. He could even have called it the South African rugby team, but he did not do this with a good intention. That is, the name Springbok itself is a name that the blacks did not like, and so he wanted to let the blacks develop their likes and love towards the white people, and that is the reason why he did not change. Even the colors green and gold, he did not change that color because that color represents the apartheid South African flag. So when apartheid was still practiced, this color was used. And he did not want to, re to change the colors. He could have changed it. That, but there was one thing in his mind. He knew that they should develop the love towards the sport. And the love towards the sport could help them in healing the scars that they were bearing in their minds. And that is the reason why he kept all these things in mind. Even though the players, the members, the team members had been changed, he continued with the same color and the team name, that is the Springbok. Because he knew and he wanted, he really wanted his people to develop their like and to leave their head rate towards this team. And seeing this, at first they might be the home crowd might be a little uneasy with this, but after seeing that there were a mixture of players, now the team is no more a, symbolize, a symbol of the oppressive white minority. It represents the whole country. Now they begin to support. And even the other nationals, they might be surprised to see this because this was a thing that they have never experienced. They also knew that this team never got the support from the home crowd. But now the, the scenario had become a different one. And Nelson Man when Nelson Mandela entered the stadium, the crowd, that is the home, there were some white people among, amidst the crowd. There, I'm sure there will be some white Africans there. They were also supporting and they were chanting his name cheerfully. It was in contrast, contrary, opposite to what, what was experienced before. In the first rugby match, when he entered, he could hear the whites chanting his name in a jeering way. And that is the reason why he might be expecting the same thing. But in this, in this 1995 Rugby World Cup, he saw something that is really contradictory to the previous rugby match. That they, he saw that they were shouting and chanting his name, cheerfully supporting him. And, and he also sported the jersey. And so when he sported the 
jersey and entered the stadium, he found that it was he found something that was contrary to the previous rugby match. People were cheering him and they were chanting his name, calling out his name with joy. And that was something in contrast to the previous rugby match. And not only this, but he began to see that the racial tensions were getting eased even among his security teams, the security official. They were always at loggerheads, as I said in the beginning of the story. But now he saw that gradual change even in his security team, and he was excited to see this. Not only this, a testimony to that is that they saw some white officials, white police officials hoisting a black child on their shoulder during the home team. This is something that is all a testimony that shows that the country is getting together. And the Springbok team, it was a mediocre team. Mediocre means always at the middle level. We know who is a mediocre. There are some people who never fail in the class, but they are never at the top also. We have a lot of mediocre students too. You might even have noticed that in your classes. They're Maybe they are good at studies, but sometimes we don't give the full effort. And so we get a lot of mediocre students or in any field, we find a lot of mediocre people. And even Springbok team was just a mediocre team at its best. Even if they give their best, they were expected to reach only the quarterfinals because they were a mediocre team. But with the support of the home team, crowd they saw some changes and in the they reached the final which was never expected from anybody and everybody knew that the new zealand would leave the trophy everyone was expecting that the new zealand team would leave the trophy that year that means the 1995 rugby world cup but they were to face that team See, there are some students, even before you sit for the exam, you know very well that a particular student would be the top, or at least first and second. They, you know their position even, you, even before you sit for the exam. Maybe the New Zealand team was also a team like that. See, when the Football World Cup comes, we know, we keep predicting, we keep guessing that the team will win, that will leave the trophy, and so on. And New Zealand team was never a team that fails, and every world, everyone in the world expects them to leave the trophy wherever they go. And so the same thing was expected this time. And one of their player, John Alomi, was considered to be in a very fantastic form. He was a very good player and everybody will be checking on him. But he never misses. And this time, this time too, they were expecting the team to come up because the Springbok team, as I said, they were just a mediocre team and no one expected them to come to the final level, finally with the support. See, support is very important in any area that you go. If if you cannot do anything to help that person, always give a support. Supporting someone would always bring them to a level that they were not even expecting. Because every one of us, all, every human needs encouragement in any field maybe. You might be losing hope in some areas, but if there is someone to support you and to encourage you, you know you get motivated at that time again. And so this is something that they were witnessing. They were never expected and they never got the support from their home crowd. This time they were expecting experiencing something that is different from the previous mages. And they also got forward with the encouragement with, the, with their countrymen, with the full support. They were supporting them cheerfully without any hatred towards one another. We see that the blacks were leaving their hatred towards the sport and even the whites were getting east because they found that they were getting united slowly. All these things were happening. And while these things were going on, even though they have reached the final, that is something, a very big achievement for them. They feel that they have achieved something and even the world would be feeling something like that. But in the finals, and unexpectedly, they were not expecting this kind of victory, but they played against the New Zealand team and finally they were declared the champion of the 1995 World Cup. And after witnessing this, the people also began to see that there is changes coming into this, into this team and also into the country. And after they won this cup, Nelson Mandela went to meet the captain. He went to meet the captain in the field and also to, to celebrate the victory that they have. And in this, he saw that they were interacting very peacefully. They were interacting very in a very friendly manner. And Nelson Mandela thanked the captain for, for leading the team and also for following the advice and instructions that he gave. And he gave the credit to the captain. But the captain said that it would never be possible without the support of Nelson Mandela, the then president of the South African country. 
he got the support from the leaders and that is the reason why the team could make it. And so amidst a group of myriad races, myriad means a variety of races. Remember, this is a World Cup. It's not just a match played between two teams or a few teams in the country. They are in the World Cup stadium. And so when Nelson Mandela and these two persons met, it was also a testimony to the whole world that the South African country had united finally. And after experiencing this, the world, uh, the world, not only South Africa has apartheid. I want you to know this. Even in the other parts of in the other parts of the world, apartheid was practiced. But after seeing that this law was lifted in South Africa, people slowly began lifting. They they began to boycott the apartheid law because they found that it would be it would be a thing that is not good for the people around the world. If they still continue, when the home country, that is the South African people, had already removed the apartheid law. And so people, uh, people around the world slowly began to remove and boycott the apartheid law. And after this incident, South Africa also found a place in the sporting world. They, we also have we also have witnessed the 2010 World Cup that was held in South Africa. Earlier, forget about holding a World Cup in their country, they were not even allowed to come to other countries. But after the victory of the rugby match in South Africa in 1995, they were victorious not only in this match, but they were victorious even in their in their races. They were able to throw the hatred that they had towards each other. And this is a good thing that Nelson Mandela had achieved during his presidentship. And people all over the world began to throw, they began to dismiss their hatred. And the 2010 Football World Cup was a testimony because the people came to this place and it was a great testimony to the world that people no longer had, people no longer practice apartheid laws. This is a testimony. And people all around the world say that Nelson Mandela's people needed, needed a leader, but he gave them a champion. There's a difference between a leader and a champion. And so they, they thought that people of South Africa needed a good leader, but they, they did not just get a leader, but they also got a champion, which was gifted to them by Nelson Mandela. Not every leader can be a champion. That is what we know. Champions should be above. And he is one of the best leader of all times. We all have heard of him a lot of times in so many documentaries and videos. You might also have watched the Invictus movie. Many of you might have watched this. And so this is something that we have learned. There are always two faces of pride. There can be so many faces of pride, in fact. Pride can be a noble pride and also a negative pride. Sometimes you want to show the world of what you have. You may even want to show it in a negative way. But Nelson Mandela's pride was a noble one. He chose the noble face. Though he wanted to maintain the pride of his people, that is the equality, he did not go to any wrong means to achieve this. And so after achieving the equality in South Africa, he showed the people around the world that he chose the the noble face of pride. And that is something that we all should learn from this lesson. As I've already told you, life implications of a story is very important. It is not only about learning the story and able to answer the questions correctly, but it is how you imply that in your life, how you apply that. See, Nelson Mandela could have taken the wrong way. The whites have been persecuting them a lot of times, but he did not do the same thing. In fact, but in return, he showed them that equality is more important than being above somebody. Because as human, we all wanted to be treated equally. And if you want the treatment from others, you also should treat the others in the same way. And this is one thing that I want all my dear students to keep in your mind. In the meantime, I also want you to go through your questions that are that are behind the story, please make sure that you try to answer those things. And there are some think and write questions. Those are some questions that you really need to think and write. You just don't need to follow what the text says. You can use your own imaginations of what you think and the teachers will not consider your answers to be wrong. I'm repeating, teachers can never consider your answers to be wrong if you have answered the think and answer questions in what you imagine. This is what I want all of you to keep in mind. Thank you for listening to me patiently and I'm hoping to see you in the next class. Thank you.